Hi and welcome. Uh, this is not an ordinary review. <laughs> Today I will make a, a detailed video about this uh, screwdriver. This is, uh, Germans will probably laugh now, uh, Vera Kraftform uh, Turbo screwdriver. And uh, it has a feet that it allows you to uh, turn this handle for one turn and have the blade of the screwdriver turn by four turns. That is the, ma the main feat of this. So if I start from this place and here you can see this turning a lot faster. That is what it does. And I will uh, explain uh, what comes in the package and uh, how it is used and all the pros, cons and catches and caveats related to this tool so that you can make a, an informed decision if you plan to buy one because I bought it and I find it in practice to be good for some things and not very good for other things. So it has its uses but uh, briefly put I don't think this is my best uh, tool investment ever. But it is not the worst also. So <laughs> that, that's uh, to, to put it briefly but now let us begin first I'll put uh, all the important additional articles and uh, links to my videos in this video's description and I will also try to make them pop up in your top right hand corner when, when it uh, makes sense for more info, further reading and so on. And also I'll put them in the video's description. So that's, that's about it and I will also make uh, chapters in the timeline visible and in the video's description so that you can skip to the parts of interest because Brevity is not among <laughs> my virtues. So let us begin now, finally. So I bought this screwdriver. I will now show you the box it came in first. It came in a bo box like this. And when you open it, it was inside. Now I put some other boxes inside. But what I want to show you is that it also comes with this velcro strap that can be glued on the on wherever you want it to be glued and then some flat surface of course that is not slippery and then you can mount this patch on it in my opinion and experience this is not a very reliable way to hold even lighter stuff much less heavy stuff so i think it's uh, not a very good idea and it also comes in a in a patch like this so let's first this, uh, pack this up. I've color coded it and if I don't forget I will make a, a comment more detailed about that part at the end of the video. So it comes like this and uh, this is the, the metric. I think they also sell one with Imperial uh, with the screwdriver blades that often are used in, used in the United States. But this one is metric so you have uh, a very w wide, uh, medium and small flat blade screwdriver. Then you have uh, hex or allen keys, 6, 5, 4, 3. Then you have torques from 30, I think. Let me double check. Yes, 30, 25, 20, and I think this is 15, and 10. Okay, and then we have positive screwdrivers 3, 2, and 1 and Philips screwdrivers 3, 2 and 1. I'll make a video about uh, the Positrive and Philips and other cross tip screwdrivers and JIS standard on Japanese motorcycles and uh, bicycles, Shimano parts. I'll make it pop up in your top right hand corner for details. Anyway, uh, one of my favorite uh, cross headed screwdrivers is Vera. I have both uh, Philips and Positive screwdriver made by that company and that is what put it on the map so to say uh, for me and that is why when I was looking for a, a bit holder screwdrivers of decent quality I wanted to give Vera a go and see if it, if it is also as good as, as this. Uh, my main idea when uh, buying this is to uh, work a bit faster and to save some space both on the workbench and in storage. Uh, this pouch can be hung, so that's pretty convenient. I like that. that that's how it comes. Uh, what I don't like about this, 
this layout and I often see this whenever I buy bits regardless of the manufacturer. This was designed by someone who works in marketing and wants this to look nicely. So the selection of tips is quite good in my opinion but the, their, uh, how they are sorted is a very, a very bad idea. They use some logic that they want to put similar stuff together. So we have positive next to Philips. We have hex keys next to uh, Torx keys. But when you are working, the idea is to avoid uh, by mistake taking similar stuff that is not right for the application that you need it for. So uh, what makes this even worse is that if I try to reassemble this, resort it in a way, this one is thick. And if I try to put a narrower blade there, it will not hold. So I haven't got much of a leeway to, to rearrange this. But how I would rearrange it would be a different arrangement. So what I would do is to put... Uh... Okay, so this is how I think this should be sorted. So what I did and my reasoning is, first you can make these brackets go over when you're carrying and when you want to work you can put it like this and then get them all a bit out and that way you can more easily take them out and put them back in without scratching anything. But my logic is that I want the, the ones that I use a lot, these are the Phillips screwdrivers, the cross tipped one, they are on one end and if I uh, reach for another cross tipped one that is not on the end then I know that it is not Phillips, it is the other one, the positive. So that's why I put them uh, away from each other and one is near the end of this line and the other is somewhere in the middle. The same logic I applied to the, the hex and the torx. I put the, the hex at the other end so that I know if I'm looking at something that looks a bit hexy, <laughs> I know it's, uh, if it's on the end it is hex and if it's near the middle it's the torx. And I put these flat bladed that are uh, visible and noticeably different, I put them just to make a more distinct, I had to put them somewhere, but I put them in the, in the middle between these uh, positive and the hex and the, uh, and, uh, and the torx. So that's at least in my opinion how uh, these bit kits should be sorted. Because the same problem I have with, with Metabo. They do have color coding and everything, but when you're working in a rush and everything here, the Philips and Positive, they're right next to each other. And in my opinion, this is a bad idea and bad design. They should be on opposite ends or so, some other layout. So I could be wrong, but that's how I, I arrange. And since this will be mostly sitting uh, hung on my workshop wall, and I will take those that I use on my tool cart, it's, uh, it's not a problem that these are some a bit flimsy now and likely to, to get get lost. I might uh, put some stitch to make this a bit uh, more uh, smaller in diameter. I'll see about that. Anyway, so that's, uh, sorry for the long digression, but that was some of my thinking out loud. And one of the reasons for doing so is that I would love to hear feedback from other mechanics and people who work with tools a lot and they explain if they also think this is a good idea or if they think it's a very bad idea and what do they suggest and maybe the original layout that Vera made is in fact very good only I'm not uh, seeing something. So please let me know and use the comment section below if you are still awake that is. Now I will finally uh, talk about how the bits are attached to this and then I will explain how the mechanism works and all its pros, cons and caveats. So let us begin with that. Here. Oh, also uh, a brief digression for color coding. All the tools in my workshop are color coded. <clears throat> I use four colors and they go from uh, one, two, three, four, and then they repeat for five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So I don't have two uh, bits or tools of a similar size that are also of the same color. Because number, this color will uh, be repeated only after three sizes larger or three sizes smaller. So that's very easy to distinguish so it makes it difficult for me to make a mistake and I don't have to spend a lot of time to try figure out did they get the right bit and uh, because these all uh, look alike and because of their uh, layout, original layout, I decided to only color those that I use most of the time and for me those are the Philips and the hex keys. 
These other ones are not used as often, so I didn't bother coloring those in this on this occasion. But here you can see this is the, the logic, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then the next uh, green one is 11. They are noticeably different. So if I need number 8, I know that it's um, uh, somewhere here, I know that it's red, and, and so on and so forth. I know that 17 and 13 are, are uh, uh, yellow, and you can see the ones that I use most often. <laughs> so that's another good thing about color coding your tools. You can easily see which one you use most. And so these are with the uh, finish that is very uh, slick, so the color gets uh, worn off very quickly. And that's, uh, I think I made a video about my tools coloring, so I won't bother you with that anymore. Now let's see how this works. Here the, this bit holder is, is very good. Uh, when you want to insert a tip, you just press it in and it's locked in place. When you want to remove it, uh, oh, oh sorry, when you're working, this, this thing can turn freely. So I don't see any practical advantage of this. Why? Because when I want to release this, I need to pull out and it, it's out. It works very efficiently. There are never false locks or false releases. It, it's, the feel is very positive. So that, that, is, that is good and it's locked very tightly. That, that part is good. The part that I don't like is that when you press on this, it, it releases. So if I want to keep this straight and work, I need to exert some downward force. And it would make sense, now that they've made this to turn freely, it would make sense to allow me to use downward force on this while I'm also holding it centered and then just pin it. That, that's one way that I think this could be used very nicely, but this design uh, prevents that. I will show you an alternative. This one is made by Metabo. This one is well over a decade old, still holds. And with it, when you insert it, it also has a positive lock, but this one has a bit of forward and backward play, more than the, the other one. That's, that's the downside, but the, the advanced, see here, I'll, I'll insert it. See, this one has no play, and this one allows for, for a lot of play. So it has some downsides, or maybe it's just rattled and worn from years of use, but I don't think that's the case. But the advantage is that when I exert downward force on this, it doesn't tend to release the, the, the bit, because in order to release it, I need to pull it towards me, not to push it out. I'm not sure if this could be redesigned to work in that, in that way, but I think it's not a, a bad idea and it gives you a nice option to keep some uh, blade, your blade centered and, and work this more easily. So that's about the locking mechanism, but the advantage is definitely it's very easy and nice to use. And I will have to get used to, I still haven't gotten used to doing it like this because this one does the reverse. But, but it's, uh, it, it holds nicely and it feels firm, firm and it's a good quality and it's not very bulky. Also, I like that these blades are very long, so they are not very, very bulky. Let me show you alternative. See, this is what I had. This is relatively cheap, relatively poor quality. And it does have quite some play when you put a bit on it. And I ground this down because I don't use this for some huge for, for torque, but I ground this down when I use shorter bits because it sometimes gets in the way when you try to reach something. So that's a downside. I like the design of these bits. I don't like that I cannot find them in Serbia in a good quality very easily, but they came with this tool and so for as long as they last and there are screwdrivers seem very durable. I've had this one for years and it's still, it's dirty, but it's, it, it works and the tip Tips are very hard. Also, before, uh, regarding the quality, uh, Vera Philips uh, cross-headed uh, screw screwdriver blades work very well with the uh, Japanese JIS standard screws. And I will show you the, the Yamaha test. Let's show you. This is not very representative. Sorry about that, but this is uh, how well it it fits, and it's not. Uh, it hasn't got a tendency to come out. I'm not holding it with my hand. So let's take it all in one shot so that you can see. I'm not holding it with anything. 
and it stays in place. And this is this is very heavy, this whole mechanism. So this is very good, very good fit, and it doesn't have a tendency to come out when you work. That's important for me. It makes my work faster and easier. Uh, most other screwdriver brands don't make these tips work well with JIS, but Vera's tips, in my experience, work well both with Phillips and with JIS screws. So that's brilliant. Now, finally, let's show how this turbo option works. For that, I will need a 5 millimeter hex key. Let's take it out. Okay, this is the, the yellow one <laughs> in my code, 5 millimeter. So I have a key here to press. And now it's somewhere in between gears. So it won't, it won't let me press all the way. I need to fiddle it a bit so that it aligns. Okay, now, it, now it's pressed, it's locked. Now it works like an ordinary screwdriver, more or less. And so if I want to unscrew this bolt, oh, I'll need number four, sorry, my bad. Okay, this is number four. It's locked positively. Now I can try to unscrew this. It's, uh, the handle is very bulky compared to this one. So if you need to work fast, it's uh, not very convenient. And it's, uh, this is when I need to put a lot of torque. And I also want to work not too slowly. This makes me tire a lot less compared to this in practice. So this is a bit too big for my taste. Maybe someone with bigger hands would prefer this, but I don't. So th this way I can unscrew it and it goes out. Okay, and now uh, for if you're working with bicycles or other stuff that is not heavy machines or things that are very well fixed, the turbo option is very difficult to use. Now you will see why. So if I press this again, I will engage the activate the turbo option. So one press is, sorry. Ciao. Ciao. Ja samo da kažem dve reči, rekao. Dragana mi kaže samo da ju poznajem sa dobrim momcima. Eto, super, super. Jel vidim da je iznajmljeno, jel? Pa ne znam, potvrdit će, javit će. Javit će, nije još potvrdilo, sigurno tako da. Dobro, super, drago mi je baš. Drago mi je baš, hvala. Važite. Ajde, vidimo se. So, uh, one press is to disengage it, to engage it, and the second press is to, to disengage it, to lock it. So that, that's how it works. And now, now it's, it's engaged, the turbo option. However, if I try to turn this screw just like this, it will not work. You see this blade is not spinning. In order to make the turbo option work, I need to hold this because that is the anchor. So you see how it works. So I need to put the screwdriver in to hold this firmly. It has like some hand anchors and only then will the turbo function actually work. However, uh, because this is four to one uh, ratio, uh, I need to exert four times the torque that I would with the ordinary screwdriver of the same diameter handle because that's, uh, that's what the gearing does. So the opposite of using a low gear on your bicycle, this is like using the tallest gear on your bicycle. So I'm trying to screw this in, and right now this is about as much as I can turn it. And this is only about one newton meter of torque, if even that much, I will show you now, because if I put this screwdriver blade, okay, I cannot turn it by hand directly, but if I put a little bit more diameter on the outside, Okay, still not easy, but let's try this one. It, it spins very easily. I, I could try measuring that torque with a, with a torque wrench, but to save the time on the video, uh, this is about, sorry, it's locked for some reason. No, it's not. See, that's confusing a bit of, yeah, it, it goes that, that hard. See, I cannot spin it, and if I hold this, I cannot spin it any, any further. It's very difficult. In order to loosen it, I also have to apply a lot of torque. So I would have to disengage this, then make it turn a bit. This is very, very low torque. Okay, now I can try using the turbo. 
And another problem with bicycles is that using turbo uh, prevents you from holding the whatever you're doing with your other hand. And with bicycles you often need to hold because the frame is not very uh, rigidly held in, in your stand. It's usually held by a seat post and, and so on. And most parts need to hold them in some place while you're tightening. So the, this is too, too uh, thick to work quickly and easily. And the, the, the turbo option does not work unless you're working on a car or something that's heavy and, and held firmly in place. So those are the, the downsides. You have to use both hands. And it goes very hard. As long as there's any resistance, you can really feel it. So it's only for very long, very loose screws that you're spinning into metal. If you try to screw something into wood or out of it, you can forget about the turbo option. And this is too thick to use. Normally, I prefer a handle like this. So there is some difference in thickness. Okay. So I think I've covered everything except one more thing. Okay, so now it's locked. I want to show you another thing. Here, I'll, I'll screw this in. Okay, it's screwed in now. Now I'm tightening it. Okay, now it's pretty tight. Okay, so you can see where this mark is, where the letters are, and see how much slack there is when it is locked. Watch these marks. Okay, also when I try to tighten it and I, I first need to remove all the slack from some free movement and then now watch how much this turns and how much the blade turns. There's some sort of a twist like a spring so this part moves but the blade still doesn't and that gives you a bit of a squishy feedback so you cannot as accurately assess how much torque you're applying to the bolt. And that, in my opinion, makes it more easy to strip the bolt or to under torque it. So all in all, uh, I may have expected too much, but I think that uh, it's a good idea to make you aware of all the pros and cons and limits of this tool. Because I'm sure that for some uses, people who have uh, very long screws that they screw into something that's fixed, and they don't provide a lot of resistance. So not into wood, but say a, a long metal screw that goes into metal without much resistance. For that, I'm sure this can work well if the, what you're working on is fixed. If it is not, if you need to apply some uh, use of your other hand, the turbo function is useless. Uh, the, one of the reasons why I thought of all this to make a video today is because I uh, wanted to assemble this, uh, <laughs> this toolbox. And so here, I have some uh, tool cart and I have these to mount and these are the plastic screws that go, sorry, that go into plastic. I will show it just a moment. These screws go into plastic and so you need to apply quite some torque but also I didn't want to work too slowly. And so for me when I worked with this locked it got my hand to, to feel like it's getting tired, that I couldn't work very long with this. <clears throat> and this one felt a lot better. Of course, for that kind of use, I went back to my electric screwdriver that I had hoped that this might be able to replace. Because I don't like relying on electricity and uh, batteries and so on. And because I like working with screwdrivers generally, I use them even for, for hex keys using these hex bits. So for some reason it's for me easier to, to operate like that and I thought oh, maybe this would be universal as a screwdriver and also replace this when I want to work faster with something. When we're talking about screws, not some crazy torque or anything. This is just into plastic so it's not very easy but it's still uh, not, a hu not a huge torque. But it turns out that this uh, screwdriver for me is pretty much useless. If, uh, this cost me the whole set about $100. And if someone offered me a hundred dollars for all these bits, I would not accept that because these are high quality bits. But if someone offered me twenty dollars for this screwdriver, I would give it to them. If I find a friend who has a use for this, I would probably uh, give it away because to me, it's uh, <clears throat> I gave it a chance, tried it, 
it doesn't cut it, I will look for alternative screwdrivers that are this short, so that they can use these bits, I love these, but that are not as fiddly and I obviously apparently don't really have much use for the turbo option. This will most likely end in a, a spare tools, <laughs> being the tools that I don't use almost never, but I, I feel sorry about throwing them away and uh, <laughs> and I cannot find anyone who really could put it to use to, to make someone happy with it, Re really happy who would really use it. So this is, as I said, uh, not, a, not a normal review. Uh, I wish I could have seen a review like this before I bought this because I probably would have went with some other options. As it is, I've already ordered an ordinary Vera bit holder that has a handle like this but a patent like this on the end, so smaller diameter and no mechanical moving parts and so that I can use it for, for bits that I, that I really love that are of, of great quality. So a hit and miss in my opinion, but I, uh, for, for those people who fall into, uh, into that niche that they use a lot of long screws in the metal, I'm sure it's a good option, though I haven't been able to really put that to the test and confirm. So. But I know who it is not for, <laughs> at least that I can tell you with this review or presentation if you like. So that's it, uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, this is uh, as honest feedback as I can give and uh, I, don't, uh, it, it's very, I don't feel very comfortable talking bad things about any company or product but I also uh, think that it is uh, necessary to to share what it is good for and what it is not good for, I think that works best in the long run for everyone involved. So I, I, I'm not going to call Vera and say, oh, you sold me a screwdriver that I'm not very happy with because it was my problem that I didn't really look what I was buying. This does work, it's not broken, it does what it says on the bin and it's normal that I cannot apply a large torque because it's a 1x4 transmission. So uh, it's, all, it's all my fault and the, the build quality is not too bad, it's quite good. The, the flex that you see is because there is a mechanism inside and you cannot make it uh, fit into a sm relatively small place and be completely rigid when locked and then work nicely when unlocked without this engagement being even more finicky. This, this way I have some, some wiggle room but to make it more uh, less twisty it would have to be a, a lot more tricky to, to engage when you want to engage it, most probably, as far as I understand and uh, can f figure out how it works. So it, it's not a really a, a bad product, but uh, you uh, should get it only if it really is for your use case. It's very specific. So this, there's a saying, I think English, that the fool and his money are soon parted. So that, that goes for me. So that, that's it. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in some other video. Cheers.